Hello and welcome to the Effects Loop. I'm Jay Byrne. I'm going to be your host for this. This is going to be a bit of a talky series, but I think I want to bring you through my history with guitar amps because I I post a lot of videos about um, about the solid state amps that I use right now. Like my my Roland JC40, my Fender Tone Master. I have a Katana a 50 behind me. I just I just want to get out there that I've got a bit more perspective when it comes to tube amps and other types of amps of other things as well because I've been playing guitar for many years and I've had many amps and I went through a period of time where uh, I was trying to find the right amp because I just wanted you know I wanted something and I didn't know what I wanted so I was going through that journey that we all go on as guitar players where you're trying to find the right amp. Do you ever really find the right amp? Maybe you don't. Who knows, right? But um so yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to give a rundown. I'm going to talk about all the amps that I've actually had and I'm holding a list in front of my face right now of 18 or actually 9 18 amps that I've gone through here. So, this is going to be a long one. This is probably going to be a multi-part thing. Um, and, you know, I'll work with some photos so you can actually see the amps and stuff as I'm talking about them and whatnot. But, uh, this is definitely going to be more of like a podcasty type of thing that I'm doing here. Okay, so we're going to start. My very first guitar amp, the first amp I ever had, I was around 16 years old, in, and this is in like the 90s, I had a uh, PV Bandit 65, which those amps have actually gotten a lot of attention over the past couple of years because I guess a lot of steel guitar players and country players like those amps because they have a good clean channel and you can you can get you can use them with pedals and they sound pretty well. I actually wouldn't mind getting my hands on one of those again today and really hearing what it sounds like because I mean I remember it was loud. I also had a friend my my friend Arthur Albanez, um, who I played in a, a band with, he played a PV Renown, I think is what it was called, and it was big. It was a 212, and the thing was loud and crazy, and it just always sounded great. I still have video footage of it to this day, and it's like, it just sounded really good. I mean, I don't know what the deal was with that amp. It was plenty loud enough. It sounded great. It's more along the lines of almost like a Fender Twin, but like PV's version of a Twin. It had built-in distortion, and even the built-in distortion wasn't half bad. At like I think it's because we played so loud at loud volumes it really wasn't bad at all so that amp was that was our our PA system our microphone amp for a while it, it was everything I mean that thing got beat up we I mean I actually finally lost that amp because I brought it to a friend's house for a rehearsal and I ended up leaving it there and then we stopped talking to that particular person for a while you know kind of had a falling out and um, I, I never got my amp back and I, I called to get my amp back and he gave it to somebody else and I just said the hell with it because the thing had problems, the knobs were all scratchy and it's just, it just, it, I think I, it, there was, I think there was some issues with the speaker and there might've been a tear on the speaker or something like that or I don't know, but the, the thing was falling apart at that point. But um, I beat that thing up and I didn't get it new. I got it used, and I don't even know when my parents got it. My father bought it for me. I have no idea where he even got it from. So so that was number one, my very first amp with PV Band at 65. And looking back on it, it was a decent amp. It had a terrible distortion. The distortion channel is awful. I mean, it's on level with the... Everyone talks about the jazz courses having crappy distortion. This, this had crappy, crappy distortion. <laughs> very crappy distortion. I went out to get an amp, and at this point, this was in the 90s, uh, yet yeah, still like the 93, 94, around there. And what I ended up finding was a lot of solid state that was available back then. Crate amps were big back then because they were affordable, and you can get something big for affordable. So I actually had a, a half stack, a 412, with a head. I had a crate half stack, and it was a, uh, it was a crate GX600 head and a 412 cabinet. It said Celestian equipped. I honestly couldn't tell you what the speakers were in it. I never opened it up. I don't know what they were. And then I sold the amp years later. So, but I played that amp for quite a few years. That was like my main amp for a very, very, very long time. 
And uh, I used that amp when I was in a band called Room 18 in the late 90s going into the 2000s. That was my head and my cab, and I mean, I just kept that thing forever. I kind of wish I still had it, to be honest with you, because it was a good amp. But like most amps, that it started to develop some issues. It had some problems, like, you know, the, it used to cut out randomly. And I've, I've been reading about these crate amps from, like, the, uh, from the 90s, and that seems to be an issue that people have. The amp would, like, cut out. Like, the sound would just cut out for some reason. Like, something was crapping out inside the amp, and I don't know what it was. But it was a head and a cabinet, a crate head and a cabinet, and it was a decent amp. I mean, at the time, you could get a really good... It was good for, like, heavy metal, because you could get a very good heavy metal distortion. It kind of had a, a pumpkins-y, a smashing pumpkins-y kind of metal-y sound to it. I mean, I, I, I just... That, that was the type of music that I played. At the time, I was in a three-piece. It was me, a bass player, and a drummer. And it was called Life Drain, and that, I mean, it was plenty loud enough, and it distorted, and it sounded good, and I think at the time I had, like, three pedals. I had, like, a flanger, a chorus, and a chorus, and maybe a distortion pedal, but I never used that because I used the amp distortion back then. So, the third amp that I ever got, uh, after the whole, I was in the band called Room 18, I made a documentary about that. You could watch it on the Roadkill Entertainment channel if, you, if you're interested. It's up there, the feature length. And at that point, I was sick and tired of having the freaking huge head and the cabinet, and I just didn't feel like dragging that thing around with me anymore. So I wanted something that was, like, smaller and a bit, um... I still want it loud. I, I, I always had this thing for, like, 212s because I love the fact that... I used to love, like, my buddy Artie Al Albanez's PV Renown, the 212. I always said that thing was plenty loud enough. I don't need any more volume than a 212. And look, I got a Fender um, Twin now. And I have another 210. <laughs> it's kind of been my thing. I've always wanted those 210s or those 212 amps. Um, tube amps weren't... They were around, but they weren't as popular in the late 90s. It's, it's a hard thing to, to describe now because I don't think a lot of people even understand how they weren't really that popular in the late 90s. So, yeah. So you didn't see tube amps that much in the stores. I mean, in my area, when you go to like a guitar center, or I used to go to a place called Rick's Music World, uh, which is still open in this area. Um, they, you just never, you, you wouldn't find tube amps. There's a lot of solid state stuff on the floor. It was crate, it was a lot of crate stuff. Um, Fender had some solid state offerings at the time. And I ended up, because we were doing more of like an indie rock kind of band, I wanted like a, t a Fender Twin. It was a Fender 212 uh, Chorus solid state amp. I think it was the ultimate chorus amp. And I got it in like, say like 1999. And I had that amp, and it was 212, and it was freaking loud. It actually had like a built-in, I want to say it had built-in delay as well. Like it had delay and chorus kind of built into the amp. Um, I did record some stuff with it, actually, and it didn't sound half bad. It was a bit of like can of bees with the distortion, though. The distortion was a bit on the fizzy side. Probably had a really good clean channel looking back on it now. Like, at, back then, I wasn't that wasn't really my thing, the clean channel. It was all about the distortion. Um, in the indie rock thing I, that, we, that I did with my buddy Pete and a couple other people, and it was called The Society Party, and we recorded some stuff. And uh, But I actually recorded, when I recorded the album, I used uh, my wife now. She was my girlfriend at the time. She had a Fender Champ. It was a, um, do I have that here? Yeah, Fender Champ 12. So I had that around the same time, and I used that a lot, that little Fender Champ 12. It, that was actually tube, which was actually a good little amp, the Red Knob Fenders, uh, Fender Champ 12. At that point in time, that's what I had available to me. I had those two amps. I had the Fender Ultimate Chorus type 212 type thing, and the Fender Champ. And I was kind of bouncing back and forth between those. It was more like a, a, a rock sound that I was into. More than a metal, I kind of shifted away from the metal and more into like a indie rock type of thing. Uh, around 2002, actually, I moved to uh, Chicago, Illinois, and I lived in Chicago for six years or so. And while I lived in Chicago, I actually didn't have an amp while I lived in Chicago. No, I had no amps. I think we might we had the uh, we had the little Fender Champ still. Katie's Fender Champ, we kept that. 
because I had that for many years, the little Fender Champ 12. But I had sold the uh, the Ultimate Chorus. I'd sold the crate. The crate was long gone. Um, I, I think I sold the crate to get the Ultimate Chorus. Um, yeah, and uh, I didn't have an amp for a while. I was just using, I had a Korg D1600 uh, studio that I would use all the... The, they had built in like amp simulators and stuff like that, which are actually pretty good for the time. Like if you recorded them and you mixed them properly and you layered the guitars properly, you could get some really good sounds out of them. So I used that for a long time. I moved back from Chicago around 2008. So we were there for about six years, right? Yeah, six years, I think. Yeah. 2008? I think so. Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, six years. <laughs> Count here. We were there for about six years, and uh, I moved back here, and when I moved back here, all I had was the Fender Champ, the 12, for the longest time, and I used my, like, my digital effects, my digital amp sims, and the Korg, and the Fender Champ 12 to record whatever. So when I finally got back into, like, a couple years later, it would probably get, and we're probably getting into around 2000... 10, 2011, around there now, I just wanted an amp. You know, I just wanted an amp again because I missed having a guitar amp that I could actually play through that, you know, that was good, that did a lot of stuff. And at that point in time, uh, the digital modeling stuff was becoming more and more popular. It was becoming a thing, you know. So I actually decided that I was going to go for a Line 6 thing because when I was in room 18 um, this was like in the early 2000s my the guitar player that I played with Rob Marshall he had one of those uh, the pot like the beans like the red line six bean and I always thought the thing sounded pretty good which is funny looking back on it now it doesn't sound as good as the newer stuff does but um, back then it sounded pretty good running through because he used to run it through the actual tube amp I ended up with a line six spider four and I had that for a good a little while um, and it's funny because the spiders get like a bad rap now and it was all built in pre effects and all this and stuff but I managed to do a lot with it the only thing I never really liked about it is it seemed to have like a built-in compression that um, was it, it would squish the sound it sounded kind of weird like if you gave it some good volume it, it would be I have a song called Alice Sweet Alice that's one of my tracks if you look through my songs on here and that was recorded the distortion from that is from the line six spider like it was mic'd i just mic the amp and it actually sounded pretty good it had a couple of distortions you could get a good kind of guns and roses sounding like marshall-y thing going on and you could get like a nice heavy crunch going on and um those are kind of like the best things that it did and then it had a clean channel it was kind of sterile it was a good little amp for what it was. It was loud. It was a 112. I think it was like 100 watts or something like that. I can't remember exactly how many watts it was, but it was loud. It was a small, relatively heavy combo amp, and it was just loud. But I did play a few sets with it, and that's when I started working on um, playing my music, so my solo music figuring out how to play along with the backing tracks and stuff like that around 2012 ish 2012 2013 around no around 2012 when i was doing that and uh 2011 2012 and i was using that the line six spider the spider uh four is what i had if you like this kind of content uh like subscribe um you know, like the videos i guess that helps if you like the videos that's that's cool uh it definitely helps me to get subscribers and uh, watch my videos if you like them. You know, I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody watching my stuff. It's great to actually have people paying attention to what I'm talking about. So that's cool. Um, yeah, this is, I'm Jay Byrne. This has been the Effects Loop. I hope you enjoyed my amp journey and I'll see you next time.